Hello and welcome to our lecture on syntax. If you recall, in our previous lecture, we talked about the rules that govern the way we speak, or universal grammar, UG for short. In this class, we are going to discuss these rules, and we are also going to discuss how these rules may differ from one language to another. Let's begin with something we all might know pretty well. Those are the parts of speech. Now, you all might know that a noun, classically, is defined as a person, place, or thing. An adjective describes or gives more detail about the quantity or the quality of the noun. So it would describe for us or modify the person, the place, or the thing. A verb is an action or event. An adverb describes or provides more information about the time, place, location, etc. of the action. These seem quite simple, right? So let's just take the noun for a second. A noun is a person, place, or thing. The problem is that this definition is not the whole story. So you can say the man is nice. The man is a person. And so according to this definition is a noun or a noun phrase. Man itself here is a noun. But what about here? The assassination of a president. Is assassination a noun? Does it describe a person? Or a place or a thing usually assassination is taken to be an action it's taken to be a verb but in this case we consider it to be a noun so that was just one problem with nouns not only that but sometimes the same word can be used once as a noun once as a verb and likewise for example John's father is nice father here seems to be a noun now what about this one John fathered the boy this one seems to be a verb. Yet there's another example. John's father country is Greece. Now this seems to be an adjective. So as you can see, these simple definitions that we give to the parts of speech, as say for a noun being a person, place, or thing, actually seem to be too simple. They don't explain everything. In reality, parts of speech have two types of definitions. The first one we looked at is called a semantic definition, or sometimes we call it the classical definitions. An example is where you say a noun is a person, place, or thing. The definitions we are interested in here in this class are distributional definitions. A distributional definition does not describe the meaning of a noun per se, but where we can find this noun in the sentence. Distributional definitions have two types. There are morphological distributions and there's also a syntactic distribution. A morphological distribution could be something like saying that a noun differs from a verb in that a noun can take the suffix t-i-o-n. It can take the suffix ness at the end. A verb cannot but a verb differs from a noun that it can take the suffix ed. It can also take the suffix ing. Likewise, an adjective could end with ous. An adverb could end with ly. So these are morphological distributions. As you can see, these are a bit more reliable and straightforward than these semantic definitions. The main one we are concerned with here is the syntactic distribution of these parts of speech. So we can also define nouns here based on their syntactic distribution. So we can say that a noun usually functions as the subject or the object of a sentence. We can say that a verb usually functions as the predicate of a sentence or the predicator. We can say that an adjective usually functions as a modifier of a noun. And likewise, we say that an adverb usually functions as a modifier of a verb. Now, parts of speech can also be looked at based on whether they are part of an open class or a closed class. Open classes are usually content words, meaning words that actually have meaning or content. A closed class usually consists of function words Words that really don't have any meaning, but serve a purpose in the syntax of the sentence. Examples of open classes are the nouns, 
verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Now the reason why we call these an open class is because you can add new words to these classes freely. So you can invent something new and give it a new name. And by that, you will have created a new noun. You can invent a new action. For example, like using the word Google as a verb to mean search for. Likewise, you can think of new ways to describe nouns and new ways to describe actions. A closed class differs from an open class in that you cannot add new items. Such closed classes are prepositions, conjunctions like and, or, but, complementizers like that, for, if, and whether, and so on and so forth. Now there's another term for word classes and that is syntactic categories. There's also another word for the open classes. We said that's either content words or sometimes we can call them lexical categories. All right, so in today's class, we talked about parts of speech. We talked about how to define parts of speeches, sorry, parts of speech. And we said that there was a semantic definition and there was also a distributional definition, which could either be morphologically based or syntactically based. We also talked about the classes, which could either be open or closed. We said that under the open classes were the lexical categories and under the closed were the functional categories. Hope that's clear. See you in the next lecture.